Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Rats by James Herbert. So, a little bit of history on this before I get started. There's, uh, like an old tale about my father when, uh, when I was a kid, we had a hamster, and my dad was watching Deadly Eyes, which is the movie version of this novel, and, uh, Obviously, it's about rats, you can see from the cover and from the title. And he was in the middle of the film, and then he turned around, and the hamster was just there on his shoulder, just watching him. So, that happened. And then this book itself was actually given to me by my mum. I think she got it from, like, a book exchange at her work. She works at a hospital. And, um, yeah, she just thought I might like it. And she was not wrong. So, let me read the blurb. It was only when the bones of the first devoured victims were discovered that the true nature and power of these swarming black creatures, with their razor-sharp teeth and taste for human blood, began to be realised by a panic-stricken city. For millions of years, man and rats had been natural enemies. But now, for the first time, suddenly, shockingly, horribly, the balance of power had shifted. The first thing to mention about this is it reminds me weirdly of No Rest for the Wicked, which is my first book, which is like a supernatural thriller novella. And that's because of the way that it's all about the bad guys, if that makes sense. Like, it, the focus is more on the rats than on any of the human characters. And that's the same could be argued sort of for the angels in No Rest for the Wicked. It's also kind of like... A log of all of the different attacks that happen but I'm gonna go through and check some quotes another thing that stands out is like how gory it is but in a really enjoyable way I loved it personally let's read some of the writing here this was some of the characterization which I quite liked I can't remember which character it was I think it was a minor character like I said the characters I just didn't really I didn't really bother with them <laughs> like it was fine I was expecting them all to die anyway I guess so anyway he resigned and moved down to London to lose himself in the quagmire of countless other disillusioned people. So for six years he hadn't worked much, but had drunk steadily till his money ran out. He was thrown out of lodgings more times than he could remember. He did odd jobs now and then in the markets, mostly spittle fields, pushing barrows, loading lorries. With the few pence he made from this, he bought cheap booze. He slept rough. At one time he'd been able to fulfil his sexual needs in dusty old cinemas, sitting next to men of his own kind. Only twice had he been threatened, once very quietly, with menace, the other time with much shouting and fist-waving, all eyes in the cinema centred on his shame. But now he was too unkempt for even that. His clothes reeked, his body smelt of grime picked up in the market and the sheds where he slept. Any desire left in his body had been burned out by the cheaply concocted alcohol he now drank. I'm going to read this little section. This will give you a good idea of, you know, the, the, the violence in it. The little body came up, but with two of the monsters clinging. Paula beat at them as she made for the door, her own legs already covered in blood from the bite she'd received. The two rats fell away, not from the blows, but because the soft flesh of the child separated from her body. Paula ran from the house with her dead baby, screaming, holding the bloody body to her breast. The rats finished eating the dog, then scurried back into the cellar, the larger ones first. The bearded man had risen to his feet, pulling a wriggling body from his face and tearing mostly hair from his cheek in the process. But as he stood, one of the larger rats leapt at his groin, pulling away his genitals with one mighty twist of its body. The tramp screamed and fell to his knees, thrusting his hands between his legs as if to stop the flow of blood. But he was immediately engulfed and toppled over by a wave of black, bristling bodies. Another dishevelled figure buried his body in his hands and rolled himself into his ball. His frail body rocked with sobs and pleadings. The rats bit off his fingers and attacked the back of his neck as well as his exposed behind. He stayed in the fetal position as his rats ate him, still half alive. Oh yeah, then we get this description of what happens when people get bitten, if they survive. The fever strikes within five or six hours. Jaundice sets in immediately. The victim rapidly loses all his senses. Sight goes first. The body goes into a coma, occasionally being rocked by violent spasms. Then the most horrible thing happens. The skin, by now completely yellow, becomes taut. It becomes thinner as it stretches over the bone structure. It turns to a fine tissue. Finally, it begins to tear. Gaping holes appear all over the body. The poor victim dies a terribly painful death, which even our strongest drugs seem only to ease a little. I like this bit here as well. Uh, so this is kind of the aftermath of some of the attacks. It became known as Black Monday for Londoners. Reports came in at regular intervals all day long. Reports of deaths and injuries. 
The underground tragedy was the major disaster. The school had almost been the second. Deaths occurred in bizarre ways. The man who went to get his car out and found his garage full of the vermin. The baby left in his pram in the morning sun, laughing at the black creatures, to be dragged out and killed. The priest saying his morning devotions, alone in his church. The two electricians rewiring an old house for new tenants. A pensioner living in the top of a new council building, opening her front door to take in her milk. The dustman who took off a dustbin lid to find two creatures lurking inside. So, I'm not going to talk too much more about this one, but like I say, I did enjoy it. Pretty good sort of classic horror novel, really. If you're into things like Stephen King and whatnot, then you're going to enjoy this if you haven't read it already. And I'm now going to watch uh, Deadly Eyes as well and see what I think of that. But yeah, rating time. I'm going to give it a pretty solid 4 out of 5. And I would like to read some more James Herbert. I think there are more Rats books as well, but I think to be honest, I'd rather read... You know, some other standalone or something like that. So, but yeah, there we have it. That's what I thought of the rats. So, as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.